Welcome to Moose Plays everyone, I'm the Liquor Moose and today we will be going over my week 1 team builder for the second season of the UPA D League. Uh, this week we are going up against Bruno PT, coach of the Cape Town Crocodiles and yeah, uh, just like when I first entered GPC, I don't know too many people here. Um, in fact, I only know two of the other competitors and they're, <laughs> they're from GPC, but anyways. Uh, from what I understand, Bruno is also new to this crowd so I don't think he's played anyone. Um, and yeah, so really it's just going to be our teams going head to head against each other. We don't really have much, uh, knowledge of each other as a player. So yeah, it's literally just going to be team for team, which I personally like better. I don't really like it when like the player mind games come into effect. It kind of takes away from the whole, uh, battling aspect. But anyways, uh, look, at, let's just take a look at Bruno's team because he, he is he is a pretty he has a pretty good team in my opinion. So Bruno drafted Latias, Clefable, Raikou, Gliscor, Mega Agron, Virizion, Sneasel, Blastoise, Blacephalon, Lycanroc Dusk, and Girder. His Z users are the Latias and the Blacephalon. So uh, biggest threats to my team in my opinion uh, is probably the Latias and uh, maybe the Blacephalon. In in my honest opinion. Um, as you can see, Bruno's Bruno's team is like very very fat, and luckily for me, I have a few Pokemon on my roster that can absolutely abuse fat. So uh, I definitely needed to look at those. Uh, Clefable is definitely coming for sure. He is definitely bringing Unaware Clefable. Otherwise, Mega Galade just goes nuts against this team. <laughs> <laughs> There's no two ways around it, um, and yeah. Other than that, uh, Raikou looks to be a little bit of a, a little bit annoying, but I think I have uh, a decent answer to it, and hopefully for the rest of his team. Like Sneasel, Sneasel is only powerful really with a Choice Band or a Life Orb. Uh, if he doesn't bring a boosting item, Sneasel doesn't really hit the hardest. Uh, Brizion, I don't think it's coming at all because I have a Turning Asterion. Uh, Gliscor is definitely going to be annoying, but again, I think I have uh, what I need to take to kind of deal with it uh, and hopefully just play around it. But yeah, um, there's not too much to say about it other than that Bruno's team just looks to have a lot of fat, and luckily for me, I have some pretty good abusers of said fat. So let's take a look at what I can bring to the table. So first off, we have an Assault Vest Hydreigon. Uh, this thing. <laughs> Actually, is quite an annoyance for uh, Bruno's team to deal with without uh, boosts. So let me explain the EVs first. Um, so we have enough speed here to speed creep his Gliscor, which is speed creeping my Magmortar. Uh, there's no way he's running max speed Gliscor. You just don't run max speed Gliscor, but he can speed creep quite a few things. And on Gliscor is definitely. Uh, with the way my speed tiers work, Gliscor, the thing Gliscor is trying to speed creep is, oh, we are working offline then. Oh, I love it when that happens. Um, but yeah, so, um, <laughs> Gliscor will, would be speed creeping Magmortar. He's definitely not going to be running max speed, uh, Gliscor, because then he loses out on a lot of bulk in my opinion. So I'm speed creeping, uh, Gliscor that is speed creeping my Magmortar. Uh, I dumped a lot into HP, but I needed the special attack investment specifically, um, there was, oh, it was so I can, the uh, Gliscor set that I anticipate, which is uh, speed, creep, speed Creeping Mag Mortar, Max HP, Rest, and Special Defense. Uh, assuming that plus uh, Toxic Orb, like Poison Heal, I can two-hit KO it with Surf guaranteed. Uh, and past that, High Dragon, like this High Dragon is a huge annoyance to Bruno's team. The only thing unboosted that can potentially KO this is uh, like boosting item Draco Meteor from Latias. Raikou can't two hit KO this with, um, actually, Raikou might be able to three hit KO with Aura Sphere, but Earth Power is a two hit KO on it. Uh, like I said, with the Gliscor, um, yeah, Surfers is guaranteed two hit KO. Uh, Mega Agron doesn't deal a lot of damage to this set, um, so if, I, so like, our combating, like, his heavy slams to my Earth Power, I'm dealing more damage to him. Uh, Virizion, like I said, isn't coming because this set actually does get walled by Virizion. Uh, but in that event, I can always U-turn out. Uh, U-turn is a very, like, no drawback play with this set because a very obvious switching into this is his Clefable, even though his Clefable is pretty much going to be heavily pressured because I do have a Mega Galate on my team. But Clefable is also a very, very good switching into this High Dragon. 
Hence the U-turn, and I can uh, get into one of my bulk abusers, which I'll get into later. Um, but beyond that, there's really, like, this set is just an annoyance for Bruno to deal with. The main reason, honestly, that I started with this was just looking at his Blacephalon, and this was the thing that resisted both stabs. <laughs> and uh, Dark Pulse is... I want to say Dark... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Dark Pulse is actually a guaranteed Oko on a Blacephalon. So yeah, this thing this thing is a huge annoyance for Bruno's team to deal with, and I'm actually I'm quite proud of this set. I'm not gonna lie, I was really happy when I made this. But yeah, speaking of that U-turn, um, like I said, Clefable is a very likely switch in into this High Dragon, which is why we can U-turn into our Choice Bandit Diggersby and look at his team and just look at Choice Bandit Diggersby. It actually. It, it two hit KOs, if not Oko's, almost... No, I actually don't think it's almost. I think it's everything on Bruno's team. Choice Band of Diggersby goes to town. Earthquake is a guaranteed two hit KO on physically defensive Clefable. So, if he tries to switch in his Agron onto a predicted return, Earthquake is going to deal a massive amount of damage to that. It's going to be kind of a mind game thing on whether he switches in his uh, Gliscor, his Latias, or his Mega Agron into this, because... Obviously, the Agron's fine with taking Return, doesn't want to take Earthquake. Latias and Gliscor easily switch into Earthquake, but neither of them want to take a Return. Um, but yeah, beyond that, this is why we also have U-Turn on this, because I can see what his initial switch-ins to uh, Choice Band Diggers BR. As well as, if you know me, <laughs> if, if you've been around the channel long enough, then you know I like my pivot-heavy games. So, having U-Turn on uh, Banded Diggers B just makes a lot of sense to me, especially when a lot of his... Um, a lot of his Pokemon don't have reliable recovery. It's really just uh, re recover slash roost on Latias. Um, I guess Moonlight or like Softwell or Wish is the big one for Clefable, and then roost on Gliscor. Uh, beyond that, the rest of his team is going to have to rely on Clefable Wish passing to it, and uh, like his team's going to have a hard time switching into this and some of my other Pokemon, basically. Um, but yeah, so Return, Earthquake, Basic Stabs, U-Turn for Momentum, and then Quick Attack for the priority. In case something like uh, the Raikou is getting out of hand, I can always, or just any of the faster threats like the Latias and stuff, I can always pick it off with ease. So yeah, again, not too much to say about the Diggersby. I am running a little bit of speed because while I don't anticipate the Blastoise, if he does bring it, uh, like... Uh, Diggersby and Blastoise share the same speed tier, so I'm just getting a, a leg up on that, plus giving him a little bit of speed creeping issues. Uh, y if you know me, you know I like to run a, just a little bit of speed on my bulky mons. But next up we have, I'm not really sure this is going to be my lead, but this was something I desperately needed on the team, as uh, Latias' coverage is, <laughs> is pretty extensive. Uh, and even as a physically defensive Skarmory, I can take those hits relatively easily. But the main reason this is here is to be a reliable answer to his physical attackers, uh, mainly the Sneasel and the Lycanroc Dusk. I don't think the uh, Verizion is coming, like I said, because I do have a Torn T on my roster, which just pretty much straight walls it and Oko's it back. Um, and if he does bring the Verizion and I switch this in onto it, even if he's a special uh, variant, which Focus Blast from that can to hit KO this, he's not going to stay in because uh, the threat of even Uninvested Brave Bird does Oko a Verizion. Um, but yeah, so we have Stealth Rock and Roost as like the obvious stuff here. We have Taunt to beat the Clefable 1v1 because uh, Clefable is just pure Taunt bait. <laughs> in my opinion, I, I really hate Clefable. I don't like it. I don't like it as a Pokemon. I actually thought about drafting it for this because it seemed at the time that it, Mega Gallade, and Torn T would make a good pairing, but I I really don't like Clefable. I think it's just, I don't like it. It's pure Taunt bait. It pretty much loses to Taunt, whether it's Magic Guard or Unaware. Even though I do expect Unaware, but yeah. So I can Taunt this. I can Taunt the Clefable to either prevent it from healing or prevent it from setting up Stealth Rocks, and then I can Iron Head, and that's a guaranteed 2 hit. I uh, don't remember, actually, if it's a guaranteed 2 hit KO. It's definitely a guaranteed 3 hit KO on a physically defensive uh, Clefable. I don't remember if it's 2 hit, but yeah. Again, this is a, a pretty standard Skarmory, not too much to say about this. Uh, again, with just, just a slight amount of speed, just to give him a little bit of speed creeping issues, I don't really see it coming too much into play. Um, but yeah, but then next up we have the Pokemon that just goes nuts against this team. Like, <laughs> I said it in my in my uh, draft analysis video, like, Mega Gallade preys on, like, on fat teams, and there's a lot of fat teams in this league. Which is kind of lucky for me, because, since this was my round one pick, and I had like I was in the middle, so literally I only had five picks to go off of, and then everyone just like a whole bunch of people just drafted fat stuff. 
So, I think Mega Glade is going to have a fun time this season. But as far as this match specifically goes, uh, we are max speed, max HP. Um, we had to be max speed to speed tie potentially the Latias and the Lycanroc Dusk. Mostly the Latias because that is the speed tie that Glade always wants to win. And Latias can't really risk a speed tie um, because this just has a generally... It has a general advantage, I want to say, over a Latias, but yeah. Um, so we're bulk up Drain Punch because I personally like that set more than uh, Sword Stance Close Combat. Uh, and then we have Ice Punch here as at plus one I can guarantee Oak. I think I can guarantee Oko all variants of Gliscor. Um, I thought about Zen Headbutt, which did at plus one I think it to hit KO, but I ultimately decided that if uh, if if his Gliscor is a setup SD set, then I need to be able to kill it faster. Which basically is uh, what Ice Punch allows me to do. And then finally we have Shadow Sneak, which uh, unfortunately cannot, uh, unboosted, can't Oko the Blacephalon, but will be able to Oko after Rocks and a plus one, obviously, Okos. Um, but yeah, we're max speed, max HP to kind of like maximize the bulk for this set, as I think that his team is going to have a hard time dealing with the Glades, so... Even, like, like I said, like, all this stuff, if I get to plus one, like, I pretty much two-hit KO his entire team, even without investment. Um, so, yeah, I think I think having this investment on Mega Galate is cool. I, I want to try out this kind of stuff. I didn't mention in the team builder, but a big reason I picked Mega Galate is because I am personally not the most intricate builder, <laughs> uh, for the most part. Not that I always go max-max, but, uh, but, like... Uh, especially with my uh, GPC team last season, uh, mo the extent of my team building most of the time was speed creep, max attack, and then uh, the rest into HP. Which, mind you, I had a pretty offensive team that uh, in that season, so that kind of got away with it. But in general, I'm I'm not the most intricate builder, and I usually try to get away with um, I usually try to get away with just my battling skills to win me games, which is fine. But that can only get you so far. So I I wanted to try this because I know this is, like Mega Gallade uh, favors intricate builders, and I want to try some more intricate sets to try to bulk this thing out and make it really difficult for teams to break. But yeah, um, this team or th for this specific match, I think this setup move and this coverage will be fine. I did think about sub, but then I just was missing a coverage move that I needed. And even like overall, Shadow Sneak is just good because uh, he I mean he does have. A Sneasel and a Raikou, which uh, are naturally faster than this, and not necessarily the Sneasel, but the Raikou actually has a, a decent matchup against Gallade specifically, because even though its special defense is pretty good, its HP stat isn't really that high, so Raikou could potentially take advantage of it, so I definitely want to have some sort of priority, especially uh, considering that it's likely that he brings Scarf Blacephalon. Um, but yeah, so that's the Gallade. I'm really looking forward to using this. Next up, we kind of have a support to, to, uh, <laughs> a support tornado Uh So the re uh, like I said, we have another U-Turner on this team. Uh, the reason for that is because in in general, like he has a very very safe switch into this in his Mega Agron. So I definitely want to U-turn and bring in some of my Fat Breakers to deal with it. Um, on top of that, we have once again the taunt to try to stop the Clefable from setting up rocks or from like cosmic powering or from uh, moonlighting or wishing and stuff like that. And I'm sure it'll come into play with like some of the other stuff, like if I find out his Latias is calm mind or something like that, or even preventing the Gliscor from roosting is definitely a big one. Uh, so yeah, I think taunt is really good, especially on a Pokemon this fast. The speed is to outspeed his his fastest mons are two 115 mons, so we're outspeeding those. Uh, and then past that, since we were fully physical, I just decided that uh, I wanted just a one-time nuke because, in my opinion, that's like kind of the best way Torn is used. Torn isn't really like the sweeper or the wall breaker; it's just the annoyance Pokemon that like can always get that one big hit off and can get that crucial KO. And that's exactly what Fly plus Fly Z is supposed to do. It does 53% to. Uh, max physically defensive Clefable, so if he's ever in that range, I can always fire that off, assuming the Mega Aggron is dead, because the Me Mega Aggron pretty much walls this set, barring Taunt stopping him from setting up rocks or uh, Toxicking. Uh, but yeah, e even on something like the Blastoise, like the Blastoise isn't going to appreciate taking a Z-Fly, uh, <clears throat> neither is like the, the Latias or the Gliscor. The Raikou, uh, the Raikou doesn't have... 
the greatest special defense, so I kind of doubt it wants to take it wants to take a Z fly. But yeah, like the Z fly is just there for like netting the crucial KOs when he thinks that like he's safe and can switch into this, and then knock off just like for the the general utility of knocking off items. Like I said, knockoff might not be the best spot considering he does have a very safe switch into his Mega Aggron, but especially before Mega Evolution, he does have to fear superpower from my Tornadus Therian. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll go along with that. I could have put just these into HP, but uh, didn't benefit Regenerator anymore, so I figured I'd just give one to each defense just because it looked cool <laughs> pretty much. Uh, yeah, not too much to say about that. Um, but yeah, and then finally, to complete the Regenerator Core, we do have my Alomamala with a mixed defensive set, mostly Spidef, but with this physical uh, investment, I can live, I can not be too hit KO'd by some hit physical hits such as uh, Choice Band, Sneasel, Knockoff, and stuff like that. Um, but even with uh, this like max HP and special defense investment, uh, Latias unboosted cannot too hit KO this. I didn't check the Raikou, but I imagine that. Uh, Thunderbolt can probably two hit KO this Just because it's like Raikou and it gets stabbed on the Thunderbolt and stuff But yeah, the, the best thing that this will probably be my first switch into either the Latias or the Sneasel uh, Depending I mean if he brings both that might be an issue, but uh, Yeah, th those will probably be my geez my first switch ins to those because like I said unboosted Latias cannot kill me uh, even unboosted Draco Meteor does 49% max, so he can't even two hit KO me with it um, since with the uh, defense drops, and then I can just throw off a wish and either uh, heal it all back, or I can wish pass into my Hydragon, which, like I said, Hydragon is a huge annoyance for uh, Bruno's team to deal with. So that's why I really wanted the wish passer here because I honestly think Hydragon can put in a lot of work, and passing those fat wishes onto it is actually going to be, I think, really, really good. But yeah, other than that, like it's pretty standard stuff from Alamamala, uh, Wish, Scald, Knock Off, Protect. Again, Knock Off for the utility of knock knocking off items. And I don't think he'll want to switch in the Mega Aggron to this specifically because he doesn't want to get the Scald Burn unless he has Rest. But if he has Rest, I'm he's kind of if he's Rest without uh, Sleep Talk, he is absolutely he's 100% set of fodder for my Mega Gallade. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, but yeah. Uh, again, not too much to say about this. Um, originally, I had Soak Toxic on this for the Mega Aggron, but uh, I decided ultimately I decided against it. I do think uh, Scald Scald Knockoff is just going to be better. It, it was more so because I wanted to fit Protect on because I think Wish Protect is going to be good. Um, unfortunately, I don't have Toxic, but it's fine. I think I can deal with this. I really wanted the Wish Passing into this because even. Even if I can wish pass into this, because it's yeah, it's decently bulky with how much investment I have and eh, sort of the defenses. But yeah, um, uh, like Clefable can't two hit. Uh, can he three hit KO this? I don't remember if Clefable can three hit KO this. He definitely can't two hit KO this. Uh, like his his Moonblast is in the range of like thirty something. I can't remember. I can't remember specifically what it is. But yeah, Earthquake uh, does a number. Earthquake plus Return does a number to his team, and. Uh, High Dragon is just a huge annoyance for his team to try to deal with. I'm, like, it's actually insane how good this High Dragon set is good against him. So, uh, I really wanted the Wish Passing. I really wanted the Wish Passer to um, to basically make these threats and annoyances even more so of threats and annoyances. As I think this is definitely a threat, and I think this is also a general annoyance. And this is just here because he has to bring Clefable, and this just takes advantage of Clefable basically. Uh, so yeah, that is the team I'm going to bring. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, uh, while this is not an upload required league, uh, Bruno, uh, at least it seems like at the time of this recording, he has uploaded a draft analysis. So uh, I assume he's going to be uploading some games for this league. So I will leave his YouTube link in the description, his YouTube and Twitter link in the description down below. So you guys can go check him out. I'm sure he makes great content. And yeah, keep your eye out on the channel tomorrow for when the battle goes live. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.